On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, I have a great episode that you will enjoy. Randy Phillips, the son of Dewey Phillips, the first ever guy to play Elvis's record, That's All Right Mama, on the radio in Memphis, Tennessee at WHBQ. Randy Phillips joined George Klein in 2010 at Elvis's memorial in Memphis State and shared his memories of Elvis and his dad. Dewey Phillips. If you do enjoy this video, please comment below, like my video, and share it for me. So let's get to the show. So I was talking to Sally, who was Sam Phillips' lady, and uh, I said, Sally, I got an idea. And she said, what? I said, we got to have a Phillips. She said, okay. And so we do have a Phillips. Now, he's not related, but he almost was family because his dad was a very historic disc jockey. And just this week, got a note on Bill Street on the Walk of Fame, and rightly so, way overdue. That's right. Note should have been there a long time ago, Randy. But anyway, his father... Uh, was the first disc jockey in the world to play an Elvis record. He played it seven times that night. And I, I was a Dewey Phillips sidekick. I was working part-time at WHBQ, and I hang with Dewey. And, oh, man, so many wonderful stories. A lot of them are going to be in my forthcoming book. But, but anyway, uh, his dad was very instrumental in Elvis's career. Elvis was very proud that he was associated with Dewey Phillips. Uh, his dad, uh, Elvis flew his dad to Hollywood once we were working on Jailhouse Rock. He brought him out for that. Uh, he did so many wonderful things for Dewey. And I'll, I'll never forget one thing that was just wonderful. And Dewey had passed away, and Randy's mom was Dorothy, Doc we called her. And they were back in Adamsville, Tennessee, which is about 70 miles east of Memphis, a small country town. From, uh, we're doing Adamsville summer, we're doing all the guys grew up. And uh, she wrote me a sad letter, it's Christmas time. And she said, you're George. She said, it's Christmas, Dewey's gone. Uh, she said, uh, we're down on our luck. It's gonna be a very sad, dark Christmas for us. And she said, if you possibly could pass this letter along to Elvis, and if he could uh, help us out at Christmas, it would be just wonderful. So I read the letter. So that night I was going to Graceland, I went out there, and I'll never forget, sitting in the kitchen, Elvis was there, his dad was sitting in the kitchen, the little area there by the phones and all, and uh, I walked up and I said, Elvis, I got a letter from, from uh, Dot Phil, Dorothy Phillips, Mrs. Dewey Phillips. He said, yeah, let me see it. I gave it to him, he read it, he handed it to his dad, and he said, send her $5,000. I mean, you know, did Elvis never forgot. He had a long, long memory, right, Larry? Yeah, $5,000 then, then it's like 50000 today. Exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, I'm so proud of this next guy. What I'm leading up to, we do have a Phillips with us, obviously. You can figure it out by now. But it, when I saw him last night at the candlelight vigil, he was talking to me, but I wouldn't really want to hear what he said because he reminds me so much of his dad. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of unusual. Randy looks like Dewey, but he acts like his mom, Donna. <laughs> He's got a brother named, is Jerry here today? No, uh, Jerry looks like Doc, but acts like Dewey. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's, and I was looking at Randy, and we're so proud of this guy, right, Sally? Where's Sally? Yeah, she, we're so proud of this young man, Sally, because he went on, graduated from college, has been a professor at one of the classiest high schools in Memphis for many, many years, Ladies and gentlemen, Dewey Phillips' son, Randy Phillips. Thank you, George, so much for those kind words. Uh, I appreciate you asking me to be here today. I, I was talking to George. I, you know, I, I teach school. I've been teaching school for about 35 years now, and I'm used to being in front of, you know, 17 and 18 year olds, but I've never been in front of this many people before. So <laughs> I told George if I start stuttering, he's going to throw me a lifeline <laughs> and, and help me out here. Uh, 
I've just wrote down a few things uh, that I remember about Elvis as it related to my family. Now, I told George, you know, most of my memories are not going to be quite as vivid as, as his and, and some of the other guys here because I was a youngster, you know, when most of this was going on. But I, I, I've got some things down in chronological order that I, I'd like to share with you. I, the first thing I remember about Elvis was the very first night that uh, my dad played his record. I was just a youngster and I can remember when my Uncle Sam bought the record over to him. He was, I, I call him Uncle Sam Phillips. He was not really my uncle, but my dad used to tell everybody that they were half-brothers. They really weren't, but, <laughs> but he used to tell people that, you know, and I, I've always known him as Uncle Sam all my life. And when I was told that he wasn't really my uncle, when I got older, I, I didn't want to believe it. But, <laughs> but anyway, that, that first night, uh, we were listening to the radio. My mom always had the radio on WHBQ, and, I remember she was ironing some clothes back then. Women did a lot of ironing. <laughs> and uh, my dad came through on the radio and he said, we've got this, I can't remember exactly what he said, but, I, but it was something to the effect that we've got this new young man, I want to play his record, his name is Elvis Presley. Uh, Sam's bought it over here and I want to give it a play. And so I remember he played it and then like George said, people started calling in, wanting to play it over and over and I was one of them. I told my mom, call daddy and Call Daddy and tell him to play that again. <laughs> and so uh, she did. And, and so he played it several times. And then, you know, from there, what happened? I, I can remember the next day at the breakfast table, my dad was talking to my mom. And, and I can remember him talking about this young man, Elvis, and how he thought he was going to be one of the biggest singers in the country. But never did we know he'd ever turn out the way that he did, as big as he was, you know. Uh, that's the first memory I remember about him. And then I remember. His dad, I mean, his Elvis started, you know, getting more and more popular and, and going before people on, on his tours. I, I remember my dad took him once down to Lansky Brothers, a big clothing store, and, and, and bought him some clothes at the time because he, you know, he didn't really have a lot of money at the time and he bought him some clothes to wear at some of these, some of these concerts that he was singing at the time. Uh, I remember the, the, the first house that Elvis bought over, over on Audubon, uh, out the Audubon Park. Once he got situated in the house, uh, Elvis invited us all out there to go swimming uh, one afternoon. And I can remember my dad. My dad sometimes acted like a nut. And <laughs> he, he got on the diving board uh, one afternoon and he was going to do a big flip off the board and he hit the board when he came down. And he didn't come back up. And I remember Elvis jumping in and pulling him out of there. You know. And uh, you know, that's, that's one memory I had of him then. So he probably saved my dad's life. Uh, I remember when we uh, we were living on Perkins Road, and I can remember, you know, at night when Dad would uh, have Elvis to come over, and of course George would come over with him and, and, and other people. And Dad would uh, he would always call the Crystal Hamburger place just before he got off the air. And he'd say, uh, you know, I'm having some people over at the house. I'm gonna need some Crystal Hamburgers. And so as soon as he would get off the the air, he'd run over there and, and they would have like 200 hamburgers <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> ran them out there and, and the Elvis would come out and of course it, it was, you know, nighttime, kind of late and Dad wouldn't tell too many people who was coming over, but of course it seemed like the neighborhood always found out we'd have just dozens of people over at the house, you know, wanting to talk to Elvis. And, uh, I remember when he would come over to eat dinner sometimes, he and George and some of the other guys, and, uh, his, his favorite meal that, that my mother cooked, and he would always call my mom sometimes and, and tell her to have this meal. He liked smothered pork chops and potatoes and gravy and I mean, anything that wasn't good you know, for us. You know, nowadays, you know, that, that's, that's what he liked. But I remember my mom used to fix smothered pork chops for him whenever he would come and eat. And he, he liked that. I can remember uh, uh, he and, and George and some of the other guys shooting poo at our house. We had a big poo table and they shoot poo for hours at a time. I can remember uh, visits to Graceland uh, when I was a child and going in when my dad would go out there on business and talk to Elvis about different things. And of course we were we were small children and, and while my dad and Elvis were talking business, Miss Gladys would take us back in the kitchen and just fill us up on cake and ice cream and, and candy and just all kinds of stuff that she had back there. And uh, I can remember the the, the day that Miss Gladys passed away, we went over there and Elvis was on the porch and when my mom walked up, he put his arms around her and, and 
hugged her and said, Miss Dog Mom is gone. And that was a very sad time. You know, I was just a youngster, but I remember that. Uh, the <clears throat> probably the, the last memory that I had of Elvis as an adult was when he came to my dad's funeral uh, and, and the, the visitation beforehand. And he was just as, as classy as you could be. We were sitting there, and uh, I, I know Elvis knew that we were feeling really down and bad about it, and so he was trying to keep us upbeat. And so we were talking about all the fun, good things that they used to do, and I believe George was there too. And uh, we were laughing, and not, I mean, not boisterous type of laughing, but we were laughing about all the good times they used to have and, and the things that they used to do. And I remember the next day, some of the pop magazines were writing stories about how Elvis was being disrespectful at my dad's funeral, laughing like that, but that, that I can tell you that was not true at all. He was just trying to, to, to make us feel good and try to forget about the, the death and, and remember the good things about my dad's life. I mean, we were, we were just having a good time, and that's, that was it. And the last thing I'll say, I can remember when I was a youngster and we were all over at Uncle Sam's house around the pool one night and Elvis was there and he had his guitar and he was strumming it and singing some ballads and I can remember my mom told him afterwards that night that when she passed on he, she would like for him to sing Peace in the Valley at her funeral. Well, he said of course I'll, you know, if I'm there I'll do it and of course you know, we never knew that, that he would pass first before my mom. But, my mom passed away oh, a couple of years ago, and uh, I can remember uh, as, as people filed past her casket that last time, Elvis did sing Peace on the Valley, Peace in the Valley. It was on CD, but he did sing it for her, and, and I know she was probably looking down, smiling about that. So anyway, that's that's about all I have to say. I, I appreciate the opportunity. First time that uh, Randy's ever been with us, and uh, what a great speaker he is, and he tells so many. Randy, I was just reminiscing about what you were talking about, and I, I remember that so clearly at, at Dewey's funeral. I was a Paul Bear, and I was on the front row, and uh, Alan and Gene and Elvis and the guys were over with sitting with the family, and uh, they were. They, it wasn't just respectful; it was actually respectful. But they were remembering things that Dewey had done, and they were they were lightening things up a little. And Randy, I'm glad you cleared that up because some of the media didn't understand what actually was going on. Ladies and gentlemen, you had to understand Dewey Phillips. Randy, he was not like any other disc jockey I've ever worked with, right, Sally? He was one of a kind, a legendary jock, a pioneer in rock and roll, and but but beside that, he was crazy. I mean. <laughs> He, 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 that's why he was so successful. You, you couldn't predict what he was going to do on the air. And uh, everybody just couldn't wait till he came on at 9 o'clock to listen to him. But anyway, thanks a lot, Randy Phillips. Oh, oh yes, sir. Good to see you, Mr. Phillips. Everybody want to buy Doug. Got Kennedy Veterans Hospital in War 24E. Just flat fix and bring you the hottest thing in the country, real hot and blue, coming to you through WHBQ in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's Friday night, tomorrow's payday and bath day. That's a good deal. Yes, sir, the first 15 minutes of real hot and blue is coming to you through the courtesy of the best beer that money can buy. We're talking about CV for me and CV for you. That champagne velvet distributed by the mass security company right here in the city of Memphis. Now, don't forget, by then, let's just flat wake up out there. Let's get ready. We're going to start off the first record here. Let's see now, wait a minute there. Yeah, we're gonna play the first record for, uh, let's see, for Demi, for Perry, for JV, for Bernice, for Vera, and for Beulah, for Effie, for Oliver, for Silent May, gonna play it for Bulldog. And the titles, we're gonna flat dig the boogie by Piano Red. Let's go, man. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, and I hope you learned something new. Don't double dribble, subscribe to my channel, it's free, and you stay updated with every new video that I upload each Tuesday on Elvis and special ones here and there. Till next time, hey, like it, share it with your friends. This helps me out. Most importantly, press that thumbs up on this video to let YouTube know that, hey, I might have an interesting show here. Till next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.